Hello, my name is Idan Reichel and you're watching Urban Music on Alex TV. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Alex TV zu einer brandneuen Ausgabe von Urban Music. Und da das die erste Ausgabe von Urban Music im neuen Jahr ist, geht es gleich richtig los. Ich stehe hier vom Lido und warte wie viele anderen auf den Auftritt von dem israelischen Singer-Songwriter Idan Reiche. Ich wünsche euch ganz viel Spaß damit oder wie man ihr auf Hebräisch sagt, Mekava Shetenu.
בחלונות בתים יש אור קלוש, שביל עפר חשוך מוביל אל הבית, ונביכות כלבים קוראים לשלום. אני הולכת לאיבוד ערב ערב, ומחייכת לעצמי כשנזכרת. זה לא דומה בכלל למה שחשבתי, כשדמיינתי שאני אהיה גדולים. וזה מרגיש כל כך פשוט ורגוע. ואין סופות שמאירות לחיים, וזה לא מה שתמיד חלמתי, אבל זה מספיק טוב בשבילי. אתה זוכר בכלל דברים שחלמנו? מקומות יפים, ערים רחוקות, הכל יהיה תמיד לטובתנו, ואז נחיה את כל החלומות. אני הולכת לאיבוד ערב ערב, ומחייכת לעצמי כשנזכרת, זה לא דומה בכלל למה שחשבתי, כשדמיינתי שאני אהיה גדולים, וזה מרגיש כל כך פשוט ורגוע. ואין סופות שמאירות לחיים, וזה לא מה שתמיד חלמתי, אבל זה מספיק טוב בשבילי. <מח> ואל 
תבטיח לי שפעם נהיה עוד מילים כאלה נשטפות עם הזמן הכל משחק חיים שלמים נעלמו כבר בים של עבודים היינו עוד גם ואל תבטיח לי שפעם נהיה עוד מילים כאלה נשטפות עם הזמן הכל משחק חיים שלמים נעלמו כבר בים של עבודים היינו עוד גם לחפש את הדרכים, להמשיך ולנת אבן שאלות קשות בלי חוקים ברורים. כולם יוצאים, כולם חוזרים, וישימון כולם טועים. אל המדבר, אל האהבה, זו שלי שלנו. כולם יוצאים, כולם חוזרים, וישימון כולם טועים, אל המדבר, אל האהבה, זו שהיא שלנו. אל המדבר, אל האהבה, זו שהיא שלנו. להמשיך ולנת אבן שאלות קשות בלי חוקים ברורים. כולם יוצאים, כולם חוזרים, ויש אימון, כולם טועים. אל המדבר, אל האהבה, זו שהיא שלנו. כולם יוצאים, כולם חוזרים, ויש אימון.
Welcome, Ivan Reicher, and Hello. welcome to Alex Berlin. We're Thank very you. happy, very happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> and um, of course, I did some research before this interview, and I read a lot of things about you. And um, one thing that hit me was that you are one of these persons um, that have a slash in their job description. So you are a performer slash producer slash composer. So you're doing all these things. Um, slash a father. Slash father, yes, yes, I write that is, too. Which is, uh, Congratulations. Hell of a work, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that kept me, or that keeps me wondering um, are you somehow um, some kind of workaholic? <laughs> um, it's, it's, a, it's a good question because um, once, I, once I was talking to a friend of mine, he has an assistant, he is a very, he's super busy, and he said, I'm, wor I'm waking up every day to my project and I'm very happy, and I, live, I live my project. And when, then I talked to his assistant and asked her, how are you? And she said, I have no life. I'm working with him <laughs> all day. And then I so I realized the difference between them. He wakes up to live his project, and his assistant feel that he, she has no life. I live 24-7 the Dan Reichel project. So I don't even say it's a workaholic, because I just this, this is what I do. I just live it 24-7. Sometimes I wake up. An hour early in the 25 7. <laughs> so it's not uh, no longer work for you? No, no. We are uh, very, also my friends and I, we are very honored uh, and lucky uh, to wake up every morning to do what we love to do. And I think that this is the actual definition of success. Well, it sounds very nice. Yes. <laughs> um, you also have been um, quite busy and been touring a lot, and you have been all over the place and performed in so many countries. Um, so my question is: um, Is it different? Is the audience different in each in each country, or is it mostly the same? So uh, it's also it's a very good question because uh, people think that we are touring all over and we are having fun. We are mostly touring airports. Okay. And we see yeah. uh, airports and backstage. Yeah. Like we are less than 20 hours in every city. We just landing. You have a great terminal here in Berlin, I can definitely tell you. Thank the backstage you. here is very warm. <laughs> um, we are touring all over, consistently around 10 years. Um, touring for a few weeks, a few months, going back to Israel, making the concerts in Israel going back on the road and pretty much touring all over the world, you definitely uh, definitely feel 
honored and lucky that people are actually coming to listen because we don't we're singing in our own native languages from Hebrew to Arabic from uh, Amharic really languages that are um, in our that you will hear on the streets of Israel and the fact that people are coming to listen in performing our art centers people are taking an evening you know sometimes the, the house is full and people can say to me all the audience came and there is nothing about audience there is no word as audience it's all about single people or couples who took babysitters uh, bought tickets in advance student traffic and and made it happen right so every concert is a miracle that it's, ha it's people are actually coming to listen to music from really from far away um, we definitely feel the, the difference if we're playing in a club mm -hmm. or you're playing in a in a performing arts center if we are playing in a very open-minded place like Berlin like New York uh, like Tokyo yeah or if we are playing in more of the small cities when people are more suspicious about what they're gonna listen to and uh, we are very happy to come here to Berlin because we always get a huge hug huge warm hug from the audience here so and this is what makes the difference as you mentioned because every terminal is the same yeah pretty much and yeah. every backstage is pretty much the same but uh, what makes the concert special is the is how you feel welcome here on, on in the city. Yeah, so um, as you mentioned, our city Berlin, um, it's sometimes famous for or known for uh, paradise for creative people or yes. musicians. How do you feel about Berlin? Berlin is one of the most uh, multicultural nation, uh, multicultural cities. Uh, I think it's one of the cultural uh, cities, uh, capitals uh, uh, for uh, well, the cultural capital for Europe, for mm -hmm. all Europe. Um, from classical, amazing classical music with uh, the great conductor Daniel Bernbaum, uh, up to the jazz scene, uh, underground scene, DJs, amazing DJs, um, and of course, b musics of music of immigrants is from all over. So it's definitely one of the most uh, fun capitals. Well, I'm yes. glad that you like it. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Um, you also mentioned that you um, that you sing mostly in Hebrew, yeah. and that if you touring well mostly the world um, probably most of the audience don't really understand your lyrics the, uh, the, this is a good um, a good point because we are when we are when we are singing in our languages mm. Hebrew Arabic Amharic uh, Ningri uh, Moroccan tongue uh, these are the th languages that we speak in in in, in the streets of Israel um, when we are playing in Israel, people mm -hmm. define this music as mainstream. It's being okay. played as mainstream music in Israel. Once we're touring outside of Israel, uh, people define it as world music. See, and yeah. this is, brings an um, interesting point. What is actually world music? And world music for me is all those artists who are bringing the soundtrack of the places that they are coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, even Miriam Makeba uh, for South Africa or mm -hmm. even Mercedes Sosa for all Latin America. Mm -hmm. Even Edith Piaf, who became the voice of France, yeah. for people in India, it can be uh, world music. Even Bob Marley, who became the soundtrack of Jamaica, yes. for people in Japan, it can sound like world music. So actually, us bringing our music from our place, if people at the end of, this, of, of the evening remember it as world music from Israel, it's actually the greatest honor that we can have. So your music... Um undergo some kind of transformation once it travels outside of Israel, would you? Um, the, only f the only thing that will feel different is that people are less singing along with us, uh, the yeah. audience, because it's not like the songs that they grew up yeah. on <laughs> or the walk to the uh, alley in, the, in their uh, wedding or it reminds them, them of a love song. Right. It's more of like an authentic uh, sound or uh, something from different, far, from far away. You know? So this is the main difference. Yeah. So um, you've been making music for quite a long time. Yeah. And um, how do you think has your songs or your music has changed over the years? When I started play, I, when I was a kid, I played accordion, mm -hmm. which is the non-coolest instrument ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> by far. Yeah. <laughs> All my friends played like uh, guitars, Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, and I played accordion. I don't know you know, even why. I guess my mom picked it for me. Okay. And then I started jazz piano uh, later on around high school. Um, I served in the Israeli army. It's in Israel, all the youngsters are serving in the, mm -hmm. in the army. It's a mandatory service, and I was lucky to serve as a musician. And oh, okay. I, 
and I was uh, playing um, every night for three years. I was in an army band, uh, kind of a rock band, and we played uh, for, th for three years. And uh, soldiers are the most honest um, audience after kids. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because if, if, you, if, if you're not good, they will definitely let you know that you're <laughs> not good. And then after that, um, I started... Um, uh, I was a I was a counselor in a boarding school. Mm -hmm. I was uh, guiding their teenagers who immigrants from different parts of the world, from mostly from for former USSR and from uh, from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Then I started to um, notice the identity problems that youngsters from these places have once they are having a huge transition uh, of life coming to Israel. Um, and then when I started listening to the radio at that time, I thought to myself, why are we actually listening only to Hebrew, mm -hmm. which is our form of language, or to Euro pop or American pop or rock? Why we don't hear the languages of the people in the street? Mm -hmm. And I started to record with friends of mine, over 150 musicians and singers that I recorded with. The youngest is 16 and the elders are like 83 and 91 years old. And in every song, I took a different lead singer and different musician and we recorded this whole project to call Idan Reichel project that at the end of the process it turned to be uh, suddenly a huge success and became like the mainstream of Israel okay during the years it evolved in a way that people joined the project to the live project to went uh, out but but then today when I listen to when I look back on all those years I definitely see that every step uh, evolved in the project it, uh, is affecting the project from me playing accordion to the to the um, uh, jazz piano or to the experience with audience army days and later on with the immigrants and mm. so I definitely he listen when I listen to the project I hear all these elements I decided to en to go on stage and to en to enjoy the moment it took me a few years it, uh, since I took the this decision I used to enjoy mostly looking back thinking wow we traveled here a few weeks ago we a few months we traveled there but re not really to go on stage and to let it go and to enjoy the moment and then I decided around two years ago to go on stage and to enjoy the moment I told it to my father so he told me a nice story about speaking about living the moment he told me that back in the days in this little town that we grew up there was a bank and there was only, it was really little, there was only one lady working at the bank. So, she did pretty much everything, all deposit, withdraw money, um, investment, whatever. And then, my father walks in the bank and he saw that at the line right in front of him, there was a, a, old, a young spirit lady, lady at the age of 92, 93, at the bank. So she's starting talking to the lady at the bank and then the, he hears speaking about living the moment, the lady at the bank start telling the young spirit about an investment plan to the 92, 93. She start telling her about an investment plan that you put the money in the bank for four or five years and it makes some interest, whatever. Anyways, my father, speaking about living the moment, listened to the conversation, then he hears the young, the old lady saying to the young lady at the bank, young lady, in my age, I don't even buy green bananas.
Okay, so um, you already mentioned your project, the, yeah. the Ida Reichel project. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? How did it all start? What was the motivation behind it? The motivation uh, was to bring the, first of all, to make music with my friends mm -hmm. at the block and neighbors from really from all over. Um, then the le after I released the project, mm -hmm. the motivation was to bring the voices of the minorities, of the voices of my friends, to bring into the Israeli mainstream. Um, and then the motivation was just to 
have fun on one hand and to to make music and to tour all over it was just it was just a beautiful and we were lucky many artists are working n- not less uh, hard than what we do mm-hmm. but we were lucky that we got a huge hug from the media and from the audience and it gave us the fuel the the energy and the, um, the good feedbacks to go on the road and just to to tour all over mm-hmm. yeah so um, almost every newspaper, everyone who's ever written something about you, mentions you um, or calls you some kind of uh, ambassador for Israel and also for freedom. Do you feel comfortable with that role? Well, I, f- I will feel more comfortable if people define it as a cultural, amb- cultural ambassador. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely not ambassador for, 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 the con- for the state or for the country or for any government. Yeah. For sure, in, in the project, as I said, over 150 musicians and singers, some of them are extremely, extremely right wing. Some of them are extremely left wing up to Palestinian uh, Ali Amra and uh, Miran Warawal. The whole idea is that they will all collaborate together. Um, I think that I will feel comfortable with cultural ambassador, same as uh, Edith Piaf was a cultural ambassador for Paris, and and, mm. Bo- and at the end of the day, Bob Marley was a cultural ambassador for Jamaica, Jamaica even if he wanted, even if not. Yeah. yeah. So um, you released a new album. Yeah. It's called um, At the Edge of the Beginning. At the Edge of the Beginning, right? Yes. What kind of beginning are you talking about? Uh, it's about circles in life. I, first of all, I um, after the last album of the Dan Reichel project, I, I, I th- my status was more or less single, and then mm-hmm. I, I met my lady, and suddenly, boom, we, we we very fast we had a daughter, and very fast we had a second daughter, and then I was not sleeping for like <laughs> two years, and then I I wanted to go back to the to my roots. That we I grew up. Uh, in a very little town. Mm -hmm. Today it's a big city, but back in the days when my my grandparents came to this little town, it was such a little town, it was just a few families. Mm -hmm. Uh, So my my parents met there, met there, and they are together since they are four. Wow. They went to kindergarten together, and also, um, yeah, and it was a very little town, which bring out the question if it's a true love or there were not many options right <laughs> I see. but <laughs> but but they 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 still live in the same place and at the basement of my parents house i set up the studio okay. mm-hmm. and i came back there uh, as a father mm-hmm. uh to the beginning it's the basement that we grew up in playing just games and stuff and then i started the whole album from a perspective of becoming again the son of my parents in the same place that we grew up in bringing there my daughters and just making the album in a in an atmosphere of closing circles all the time Mm -hmm. so it was always at the edge of the beginning i see so um do you think that's the reason why um it's a little bit more calmer and it sounds more grown up I feel that it's. Uh, I'm happy that you that you saying it because I felt that I'm I'm ready to welcome the listener uh, to uh, to my inner world, but really to the intimate re- inner world. Also, in the past when I wrote songs that were uh, um, personal, mm-hmm. but uh, at the end of the day, I was not the one to sing it because I took many uh, singers from different parts of the world to sing it. But then I felt that the sound should be intimate and close and 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 that the listener will feel that he's right there at my living room or at the basement of my parents house yeah all right that sounds very nice um there's another thing i read that um well musicians are sometimes known for the attitude and they want to be in the center of the attention but you said that in the Ilan reichel project um there should be no front man so are you the big exception or how does it work with so many artists involved it's it's a diff for me it's a different form of music um you know you hear many a lot of music in in the radio yep but not everyone is working in the same occupation for an example leonard Cohen is not working in the same op- occupation of britney spears okay <laughs> although they are both playing in the radio mm-hmm. what i do is you can you can compare it to a, m- a filmmaker like Steven Spielberg is mm-hmm. making the film he's writing the, d- the the script maybe but you'll never see him on the screen yeah 
you will never see him as playing the you will remember Denzel Washington you right. remember Brad Pitt but it's the movie that Spielberg directed mm-hmm. what I do is more of the m- more of the same more of the the um, the movies of, of Spike Lee and Woody Allen okay that sometimes they want to play one of the roles I see or Quentin Tarantino he uh, exactly yeah. mm-hmm. exactly Exactly. Ah, okay, yeah, that's a nice yeah, idea. Indeed. <laughs> um, so, what uh, what is next for for you or for your project? What what does the future bring? Um, the the future is a concert in Berlin in a few hours. <laughs> This is the future that I'm thinking. Once yeah. you when our, when we are in on the road, you, sometimes you don't need, know even where are you performing tomorrow or the day after. Mm-hmm. It's the ultimate way. Of living the moment you yeah. just um, wake up every day at four or five in the morning and Ooh. the tour manager tells you okay we go into the airport we're flying here we're flying there I don't even know what what time is the concert today if it's seven or eight or nine you just uh, then they tell you okay you have a uh, uh, sound check then you have interview then you just you go by so when you ask me what's the future holds <laughs> uh, the few w- up What I know is that we have a concert in <laughs> Berlin tonight, yeah. which is uh, it's the ultimate way of living the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds very exciting, but also a bit exhausting. Is it? Does no, it it's no wait till you have kids then you'll see what is exhausting <laughs> we are having fun here first of all we're sleeping <laughs> Maya that is working with me ha- mm-hmm. ha- that is singing uh, she has four kids she is wow. in a sleeping mode since we left Israel <laughs> she's just sleep <laughs> the whole time I just wake her up just to for sound check and for uh, for um, for concerts so it's definitely not exhausting we yeah. are uh, having uh, really um really fun time yeah. to play and to just to, to rest to be on the road and uh, also uh, yeah it's, you always remember that it's it's a privilege it's a privilege that I hope that we will always have the, this privilege well that sounds very nice what yes. you said earlier is quite similar to working a TV because when you're out in the field people tell you eat when you can and sleep when you can exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thank you very much for this lovely interview. It was thank you. Nice talking thank you. to you, thank and you. I can't wait to see you on stage. Indeed. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. All right. <laughs> This was fun. <laughs> I'm not 
birthday here. So, das war's leider schon wieder mit Urban Music bei Alex TV mit dem wunderbaren Idan Reiche. Ich hoffe, euch hat es genauso gut gefallen wie mir. Man soll ja bekannterweise aufhören, wenn es am schönsten ist. Deswegen gehe ich jetzt beschwingt nach Hause und wünsche euch noch eine gute Nacht. Bis zum nächsten Mal. <lacht>